Undertaker versus HBK. You want to talk about the mother of phenomenal matchups, this one ranks up in the top five. All that was on the line was the Undertaker's prestigious 16-0 streak, trying to go 17-0. And, of course, we've seen all the hype and all of the buildup that has happened over the past couple of weeks with Shawn Michaels having some phenomenal promos based on this. And then we got to the matchup, and it did not fail to deliver. It was truly the match of the night. The Undertaker may have actually hurt himself in this matchup pretty badly early on because he did seem to have a noticeable limp throughout a lot of the matchup. And then he took a very nasty spill whenever he decided to do the suicide dive out of the ring and actually ran into a WWE cameraman. Now, this, was, this wasn't this was something that happened accidentally. Shawn Michaels pulled the cameraman in front of him to, to take the fall. But if you, get, if you watch the matchup, and this is why I'm telling you, Buy the pay-per-view and watch the matchup to see this moment because it was something to remember. But you'll notice that The Undertaker just... He took one hell of a spill. And how he was able to finish this matchup was beyond me. In fact, while he was recovering, there was definitely a long period of time where the match was kind of stale and stagnant and didn't have any motion. But once it got back going, you just saw a ridiculous amount of of action, and you saw these two pour their hearts, their souls, their minds into this, and really, if you are a Shawn Michaels fan or an Undertaker fan, either way, no matter what the result, you would be proud of both of these men. By the way, the only thing I'm going to say is 17-0. and 0. The love triangle match between Cena, between The Big Show, and between Edge. Of course, John Cena has nothing to do with the actual love triangle, else that would make the whole Vicky Guerrero thing a love square or something, parallelogram, I don't know. This matchup was, eh, it was kind of creative, but the result was not too surprising. John Cena walked out of there as the champion, which is going to make a lot of Cena fans and a lot of wrestling fans very happy to see the belt around him again. And... You know, as far as the matchup was concerned, you got to see John Cena's strength in the matchup, which is something that he really displayed, because he almost gave the attitude adjustment to both the Big Show and Edge at the same time. Now, getting the Big Show up is one thing, but to have Edge piled on top of him and to actually almost pull it off, that was a marvel. I, I, personally, I think that John Cena is... I have a lot more respect for him now. And he bleeds this business, and I see it, and very good. It, it, it's right to put the title on him and let Edge and the Big Show kind of handle their business. I don't think I think that the Edge and the Big Show thing is far from over, and as it rightfully should be. But you never know. Randy Orton and Triple H. This was a matchup that was very odd and perplexing. First off, both finishers were hit within two minutes of the match. But this match was not two minutes, ladies and gentlemen, so don't instantly think, okay, I'm not ordering the pay-per-view because the world title match was shitty, because it was over in two minutes. No, it wasn't. It went on long after that. Of course, the stipulation was, if Triple H got disqualified, he lost the belt. Of course, if Randy Orton got disqualified or anything like that, hey, Triple H retains. It's a pretty simple thing. Now, I will say this. There were a few elements of this matchup that are definitely worth watching. There are a couple things where you'll think you see something coming and something else came out of nowhere. There were a lot of reversals and counters, very psychological, very well played, except for the result. The result is, is that Triple H still retained the title and is still the champion, which is something that I find a little bit a little odd, a little off. Uh, I really think that that kind of kills a lot of momentum. But there may be an end to justify the means, and that is the fact that the WWE draft is here in eight days. Not tonight for Monday Night or should I say seven days now, I'm sorry. But not, it's not tonight on Monday Night Raw, it's next Monday night, which is uh, going to be a three-hour spectacular. So be sure to check that out, be sure to check out Raw tonight. If you missed WrestleMania, I do encourage you to order it. I'm not saying that it's going to be a waste of your money. I'm just going to say that if if 
$70 was paid for it, and the only reason why I don't know the exact figure was because I was over at somebody else's house. I was practically mooching a WrestleMania, which I don't like to do, but I did it. But if you're paying $70 for it, I would say about 25 to 30 of those dollars were worth spending. The other 40 or whatever the figure was that you didn't spend, or, or that you spent, you shouldn't have had to. And Vince, to you, we're in a recession, buddy. If you're going to charge an outrageous amount for a WrestleMania like WrestleMania 25, give us a better result. Give us a better raw product. Give us something memorable. Really give us more than something memorable because we got one memorable thing. We got a great matchup between The Undertaker and HBK and we got, you know, a pretty good matchup between The Hardy Boys. But the whole show, the whole show has to leave me speechless in order for a lot of people to drop that kind of money again. So, it's just a word of advice. But anyways, guys, as I said in the beginning... Do not be discouraged into buying this because of what I have to say about it. And because I just spoiled maybe some of the outcomes for you. You know why? Because half of the fun of watching is seeing what happens to lead up to the final result. And there are a couple moments that were definitely worth it. But as I said just a couple moments ago, there were a lot that really it could have been without. Take care, guys.